In this video, you'll witness some of Europe's most exotic animal proteins. I heard that you can actually eat the heart raw. You're gonna try it. And all of it is legal. I thought whale would be the most controversial thing I ate. Apparently not. But first, let's back up. The Faroe Islands have a fishing and hunting culture that goes back forever. Pew, pew. The rich waters of the Atlantic Ocean provide an endless bounty of seafood. Look at this. And seabirds. They look like they're painted. They look cute and perfect. There, there. Ah, oh, quick. Yeah, the sneaky fuckers. Today, I'm on a mission to experience rare Faroe foods you won't find anywhere else. This bird was suffering from anxiety, and I believe it's cured. Yes. From actual dolphin meat. When the weather's bad, this is, you know, a man's breakfast. To hunting one of the most elusive seabirds in the world. Where the f*** did he go? The puffin. It all starts here. Refrigerator tours here in Faroe Islands are epic. Men's Health on YouTube, they do these fridge tours, and they're always like, oh, I have oat milk. Here's some broccoli. No. I don't have oat milk here. This is Torek, expert fisherman and hunter. Later today, he'll guide me as we go bird hunting in the open ocean. You can't see, but these are uh, puffins. So this is what we're going for later today. Hopefully. This is fermented sheep spine and neck. Whoa. Looks brutal, but it tastes delicious. This is the neck. Marinated pile of whale. So what's here? Oh, there's more whale meat. Don't know what this is. And then we have the dolphin meat. Dolphin meat? Yes. How do you acquire dolphin meat? It's the same way as we do with the grid, huh? Or a pile of whale. We've already witnessed how the Faroese drive pods of whales to the shore and slaughter them for the purpose of consumption. The same process is conducted when a pod of dolphins is spotted swimming near the islands. It's not new. The first time they killed dolphins in the Faroes was around 200 years ago. What animals would actually be considered bizarre or taboo to eat here on the Faroe Islands? <sighs> yeah, that's uh, a cat. <laughs> if people are eating it, it's part of the normal diet here. I don't see why I wouldn't do it. Exactly. I'm putting on olive oil, so we put this straight out. Pitch of salt. So this dolphin is hot this summer. I was actually here at home. I got a call that there were dolphins in this bay. I just got in, you know, these clothes and just went straight to, to the beach. I got around uh, a whole dolphin for myself. Plenty for me and my family for a few months. Suddenly, I think he will be really interesting. As an American, they love to try new things, so I think he will love this. The casual consumption of dolphin meat may catch you off guard, but for folks here, it's a significant, normal part of the Faroese diet. Hundreds of years ago, catching flipper meant having enough meat to survive another day. I thought whale would be the most controversial thing I ate. Apparently not. Always something new in the Faroes, right? This tastes really good. Yeah? Yeah. Good, you like it. It's really beefy. It does have a little bit of wild taste to it. Not yeah, gamey, yeah. but just something that's been not eating grain its whole life. Exactly. It's been eating fish its whole life. This bread is perfect complement for this. It's soft, beefy, buttery. No fish taste to it whatsoever. And it's consistently soft throughout this huge portion of protein. So today, you're taking me hunting. Specifically, if we can, we're gonna try to get the puffin. What is it that separates the puffin from other birds? The beak. They look like they're painted. They look cute and perfect in a way. So there are many people who don't like that we uh, eat those because you can't eat a beautiful animal, right? Oh, is that also controversial? Yeah. Oh, I didn't even know that. Of course it is. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's time to hunt. Now it's time to hunt. But first we gotta get ready. Before the hunt begins, Torx's getting me familiar with our weapons in none other than the weapon room. Welcome to the gun room. Yeah. Welcome to the gun room. The guns we're using, they're all 12 gauge. This is mine. And I think you're gonna use this. The junior shoddy? Uh, this is for, for the real man. How do I cock it? Like in the movies. Oh, you can't. Like this? That's about it. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Wait, what do I, huh? Sounds a bit manly. I like Clint Eastwood. Yeah. <laughs> Get out my property. With our weapons packed, we're ready to go up against our biggest adversary yet a foe no firearm can protect you from. She's mercurial, she's ruthless, and she's taking the lives of thousands. I'm talking about the open sea.
This is the first day of puffin hunting season, and though you've likely seen footage of puffins on cliffs during mating season, right now our best bet is heading out into the open ocean, miles from land. We have all that we need for the hunt, except maybe one thing. The weather. My dude, we're hunting. How are these conditions? Is this pretty typical or is this good? Is it bad? This is good dish. Understanding the weather here can be the difference between life and death. Under this powerful wind, the waves are becoming taller and more lethal, especially as you head further into the open sea. Near land, the islands break the waves, meaning we'll have to postpone the puffin hunt. But there are still several prized bird species within reach. Cormorant. In Latin, the name means sea raven, a fish-eating bird. They spend big chunks of their day out at sea, and they're insanely difficult to pin down. Now, I only know about Minnesota hunting, and we shoot birds in the sky. This is the opposite. They're sitting on the, on the ocean. The strategy is to just drive and look, creep up on them on the boat. Hope they don't fly away. Or dive. Oh, right. Yes, because they eat fish, so they can dive around two to four minutes down. So how close do you have to get? Maximum 40 meters. Oof. What do you think our chances are for today? Hoo-ha. 50-50. 50-50. <laughs> We're going after a bird right now. Every time we get close to it, it takes off and it starts flying, it lands. We approach it, it starts taking off again. He said it's not even worth pursuing if it's flying, they're just too fast. When the birds reappear, they're riding a Nordic wave, making them nearly impossible to hit with precision. Where is it, where is it, where is it? They are extremely elusive. Always. You see them and then they're gone. Oh, oh, this side, this side. Ah, way too far, but <laughs> I tried it. I just worth a shot. It was like right above the water. All right, it's in front of us. Oh, I just went down. Hell of a list. It went, it went down <laughs> when I shot. Oh. Oh, it's so far. Right there. There it is. Yeah. Oh. oh my God. Nice work, bro. Thank you. First bird of the season. It was just diving. I mean, these birds like live on the water. They are more fish than birds, actually. This is uh, maybe five, eight years old. You can tell by the look of the feathers. And is this good eating? Personally, I think they're really good, yeah. Of course, they're wild birds, so they're a gamey. But if you like gamey, then this is perfect. All right, this is a great start. The Torix tutorial complete. It's time for me to take a crack at it's it. so far away. No, no, it's good. Ah. Ah. Ha, ha, ha. There, really close. Ah, you were too low. Ah, I had the perfect shot. All right, I think I got one shot left. Is it right there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know if I'd get the chance to actually hunt anything or shoot anything today, but boom, take a look at this. One cormorant, mark me down. You trained me well. Yeah, really well. Too well, I think. Now I'm fired. <laughs> Weather in the Faroe Islands doesn't care if you have an outdoor wedding, picnic plans, or that you flew here from halfway across the world to hunt puffins. If you're true Faroese, you'll take these setbacks in stride and focus on what you can actually control in that moment. The first thing you do is cut the wings. You eat that? No, just it's easier to clean. Oh, uh, okay. What about chicken wings? Do you eat chicken wings? That was plan B. If we didn't catch anything, then the neck. Throughout the day, the weather's only been getting worse. Oh, wow. Tomorrow, we'll have our last shot at tracking down the prized puffin. But for now, a bird in the hand is worth two in the open sea. The weather wasn't so good. Horrifying, actually. But at least we have dinner. Back at Turek's home, cooking is underway. Step one, butchering. Tori picked out his two favorite parts, the legs and the breasts. I think the breasts are the best. Breasts are the best. The breasts are flavored with salt and onion salt, then fried in olive oil. Chewy. Chewy, a little bit lean, certainly not overcooked. Even better if you're not eating it like a caveman like me. I think if you cut it into thinner slices, it will be better. Yeah. You put great spice on there. I like it's just very straightforward. Try to give the bird a chance. The interesting part is it's a breast, but it tastes like dark meat. In fact, I can't even say like, oh, it's chickeny. No, it's a sea chicken. The legs or drummies are seared with salt, pepper, and thyme. You can see they're a swimmer. These are the back legs, of course. Yeah, like it's got giant hamstrings. I bet you your same neutral taste. It's kind of like a really lean beef steak. It's weird. It's a bird. No weird cartilage or fat. Just like one consistent texture all the way through. You think the puffin has a more dramatic flavor? Yeah, 100%. Puffin hunting day two. 
Tomorrow, we fly out, so this is our final opportunity to take on this elusive seabird. Luckily, the weather and waves have gone from deadly to barely safe, so into the open sea we go. The Atlantic Puffin is among the most populous bird species in the Faroes. Right now, during breeding season, there are up to 1 million puffins here. They hunt and eat small fish, and they're built for it, able to maneuver underwater and hold their breath for minutes. No! It went down. Beyond this, they're less than half the size of a cormorant, meaning they're a very small target. The puffin's only dead giveaway, their giant triangular beak. Just now he's trying to shoot this bird out here, but the waves are going up and down so much that it's hidden half the time. Ah, <laughs> And also, the birds are moving up and down. That's the point. We're moving up and down. Oh my God! The birds are moving up and down, we're moving up and down, and now everyone's wet. So, let's see what we can do. 12 o'clock. Come on, you got it. No. What are you waiting for? Straight ahead. Boom. Smoked it. Oh shit, I see. There's two of them straight ahead. Oh! Two more. Just like that. This is insane. You spend hours and hours looking around, seeing nothing, and then suddenly in the horizon, you see a couple of black dots with some big triangle beaks, and then you get them. He got some. He got one here. It's like a whole new level of difficulty. Just being on land with a gun, hard enough. So the fact that you're able to come out here, see these birds from a mile away, track them down, smoke them, is truly impressive. The weather wasn't cooperating, but we said, you know what? We're going anyway. And it turned out really good. There is one thing though. I heard that you can actually eat the heart raw. You're gonna try it. I've never had a raw bird heart. This is really good. I guess if you're out here for a while, you forgot your granola bars, this is a good alternative. Oh, is that it? Right there? Wow, you took that out with such precision. How'd you know where it was? I'm a field killer. Oh. Mmm. Not bad. A bit rare, slight irony flavor, but it still has some bite to it. It doesn't feel like jiggly and raw. Tastes like a heart. Pumping. Yeah, it stopped a while ago. Cheers to you. Thank you. <laughs> The only thing left to do now is to go back, cut these up, and make some delicious food. I can't wait to see how this tastes. The puffins are defeathered the new-fashioned way on an industrial defeathering machine. Then they're torched to clean the remaining hair. After trimming them down a bit more, the puffins, water, and salt join a pot and simmer. After one hour on the stove, the puffins are ready to eat. With a compulsory side of potatoes, this is our long-awaited, well-deserved, and most definitely epic final meal here on the Faroe Islands. You're not cold? Me? Yeah. It's summer, what do you mean? Ah, good point. It's dry also. Yeah. It's freezing out here. The breast is here, and just cut it like this. That meat, I've never seen breasts like that. It looks yeah, like it a chicken like liver. So, boiling. I gotta say, this is not a judgment on your cooking whatsoever, but everything that's been cooked today has been kind of done uh, in the way of a bachelor. Mm. Just easy, quick, straightforward. Is this like a common way to cook this? Just this is the old way. Oh, oh. What, if, what if I just ended it there? <laughs> Breast is a little bit dry, but the skin brings back some moisture to it. There's no ketchup, no mayonnaise, and there is no fermented uh, sheep tallow. Just this, like this, potatoes, you forgot one or five. Wow, I love the taste. A bit more flavor than corn. Mm -hmm. It's interesting to have two to compare. That was really beefy, and this is much more just like a dark meat that's a little bit more on the dry side. More gamey also? With a little bit of game. Like me back in high school. <laughs> a little bit of game, not that much. All right, let's try the legs. It is amazing because the breast is pretty big compared to, look at that, that is a tiny little thigh and drumstick. Question the leg? The leg's a little fishy. Wow. Of course, they eat fish, so that's for that reason. Do you think you taste fishy? Sometimes. I love the texture of the leg. There's a little bit more fat there, and the flavor is fascinating. Oh, hold on, I forgot to mix that with a potato. Oh, of course, yeah, don't forget that. I noticed you kept the head on. Is there a reason for that? Yes, we eat the brain. Oh, whoa. All right, this is the first time I've seen that procedure. Oh my God, I'm going right through the skull with this butter knife. Oh, take a look at that, dude. This bird was suffering from anxiety, and I believe it's cured. Yes. Yeah, it's a little bit like a pig brain. You think? I never tried pig brain. Creamy, a little bit livery, has some minerality to it, and a potato. <laughs> mm, 
This is my final meal here in the Faroe Islands. One of the most interesting, unique places I've ever been to. It was my goal to come somewhere in Europe that people had not seen a million times before. I believe I've achieved that goal. 100%. You grew up here, you're born here, you are Faroese through and through. So for me, I don't know if I could live here long term. And maybe if I was born here, of course, I'm sure I'd get used to it. But what is it that you love about being Faroese? I think it's the freedom. You can do almost anything that you want. For example, hunting or the work that you want to be. Yeah. You can be literally who you are. I love that you hunt, but you have great respect for where you come from and for the creatures here as well. So we have to. I've learned a lot from you, so thank you very much. Likewise. Dirty handshake, yeah. sip of beer, and let's go inside. Why the hell are we out here? Well, <laughs> yeah. Best Ever Food Review Show is a small team of independent creators, and everything we do here works because of you guys. Click the link in our description to join our Patreon and receive exclusive benefits. A peace. We're here on this beautiful driveway of your neighbor, awkwardly sitting at a plastic table with an incredible view. Yeah. How often do you do this? Ever? None. Yeah, great. Uh, it looks good on video. You got that shot with the drone? Uh, kind of. And you can taste the hemoglobin, like the, the juices. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. What is it? It's a racer bill. It's a racist bird. Not a racer bill. A uh, racer bill, okay. I just noticed your socks don't match. Life is too short to, to match socks. Actually, every time I go on the boat, I take this with me. You never know. Just in case you have to shoot a whale or something. Is the shotgun waterproof? Um. Uh, Ish. How do you know when the waves are too high? When does it become unsafe? When we tip over. Okay. At that point, let's go back. Oh, and that is the end of our Faroe Islands series, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. This is a dream I've had for a long time to come here pre-pandemic, and boom, here we are. No pandemic can slow me down, except for by about two and a half years. I want to say a huge thank you to everybody who helped make this production possible, you guys for watching, our local producers, plus all the restaurants, families, and chefs who cooked for us and made one-of-a-kind food that I may never be able to try again. Amazing experiences. I hope you enjoyed it. That is it for this one guys see you next time a pee you know there's still one kind of dolphin that's legal to eat that we did not eat I'm gonna find it let's go